In the previous lecture, we discussed the introduction to RH criteria, the method of forming routes array, and the necessary and sufficient conditions for the stability of control system. Now, from this lecture, we are going to discuss some special cases of RH criteria, and in this particular presentation, we are going to discuss the special case one of RH criteria. So, let's get started. So, the special case one of RH criteria refers to a situation when the first element of any of the rows of routes array is zero, and the remaining row contains at least one non-zero element. So, during the formation of routes array, when the first element of any of the row is zero, that is, any element in the first column of routes array is zero, and the remaining row contains at least one non-zero element, then this becomes a special case of RH criteria. And what is the effect of this situation? The term in the next row becomes infinite and the route test fails. So whenever the first element of any of the row of routes array is zero, then in that case, the term in the next row becomes infinite and the route test will fail. So let's understand this with the help of an example. Examine the stability of the system whose characteristic equation is given below. One characteristic equation is given to us which is s to the power 5 plus 2s power 4 plus 3s cube plus 6s squared plus 2s plus 1 equal to 0. And we need to examine the stability of the system by using the RH criteria. So firstly, we have to check for the necessary conditions of stability. So tell me, is this characteristic polynomial is also a Hurwitz polynomial? Let us check this out. We can see that all the coefficients of characteristic polynomial are having the same sign they are all positive. So, the first necessary condition of stability is satisfied and we can also see one thing that this is a fifth order characteristic polynomial and all the powers of s from s power 5 to s power 0 are present. That is none of the coefficient vanishes. See, s power 5 is present, s power 4 is present, s cube is present, s squared is present, s power 1 is present and s power 0 that is the constant term is also present. So, all the powers of S are present and hence, this characteristic polynomial satisfies both the necessary conditions of stability and hence, we can say that this characteristic polynomial is a Hurwitz polynomial. So, in order to comment on the stability, we need to perform the routes test. So, let us now move on to the solution. So, in order to perform the route test or in order to apply the RH criteria, we can say, firstly, we have to form the routes array. So, for routes array, we have to form this table. We have s power 5 here and in the second row, we will have s power 4 and we know that we can fill these two rows directly by using the coefficients of characteristic polynomial. So, in this example, let us fill the first two rows vertically that we discussed in the previous lecture. So, what are the coefficients of characteristic polynomial? Yes, these are 1, 2, 3, 6, 2 and 1. Now, if we fill these two rows in a vertical manner, then we don't have to perform the alternate fashion. We can directly fill it like this. 1, 2, 3, 6, 2 and 1. And we can see, after this constant term 1, we are not having any of the terms present. So, rest of the terms in these two rows will be 0. So, in this way, we have completed these two rows. We can now move on to the third row, which is 0 of s power 3. And we know that in order to complete this row, we need to perform certain calculations in these two rows. So, what will be the first element of this row? Yes, it will be 2 multiplied with 3 minus 1 multiplied with 6 over 2. So, it will be 6 minus 6 over 2, which is equal to 0. Now, moving on to the next element, it will be 2 multiplied with 2 minus 1 multiplied with 1 over 2. So, it will be 4 minus 1 over 2, which is equal to 1.5. Now, moving on to the next element. What will be the next element? Yes, it will be equal to 0 because we are not having any terms present here in the first two rows. So, it will be 2 multiplied with 0 minus 1 multiplied with 0 over 2. So, the third element in the third row will be equal to 0. Now we can see here, the first element of this third row is 0 and the remaining row contains at least one non-zero element. So we can see this is the special case 1 of RH criteria in which the first element is 0 and the remaining row contains one non-zero element. 
Now, if we want to observe the effect of this zero in the next row, we can perform the calculations. So the next row will be the row of s power 2. And if we try to calculate the first term in this fourth row, it will be 0 multiplied with 6 minus 2 multiplied with 1.5 over 0. And we know that anything divided by 0 becomes infinite. And that's why the first term in this fourth row will be infinite. And due to this, we'll not be able to calculate the rest of the terms and we'll not be able to complete the routes array. And hence, we can say the route test fails. So in this way, we have discussed the problem, which is the special case of RH criteria in which the first row of element becomes zero. And due to this, the next element becomes infinite and we are not able to fill the routes array. Let us now discuss the solution to this. So there are two different methods by which we can overcome this problem. So firstly, we will move on to discuss the method number one. So moving on to method number one to overcome the special case one of RH criteria. So in this method, firstly, we have to substitute a small positive number epsilon in place of zero as the first element in the row. So what is the problem in the special case one of RH criteria? Yes, the first element in the row becomes zero. So in place of zero, we have to place epsilon. Then in the second step, we need to complete the array with this number epsilon. So considering this number epsilon, we need to calculate rest of the terms and complete the route array. After that, we need to examine the sign change by taking limit epsilon tending to zero. Since epsilon is a small positive number, we can examine the sign changes by taking limit epsilon tend to zero. So let us try to examine the stability of the same system by applying this method. So considering the same characteristic equation, which is s power 5 plus 2s power 4 plus 3s cube plus 6s squared plus 2s plus 1 equal to 0. So let's form the route theory first. We will have the s power 5 as the first row and s power 4 in the second row. And we have the coefficients 1, 2, 3, 6, 2 and 1. And we know if we are filling this row in vertical manner, then we don't have to follow the alternate fashion. We can fill it directly like this. 1, 2, 3, 6, 2 and 1. So we need not to follow the alternate fashion if we fill the coefficients of first two rows in this way. I hope you got this. Let us now move on to fill the third row, which is the row of S cube. And it will be 2 multiplied with 3 minus 1 multiplied with 6 over 2 and we know it will be equal to 0. So in place of 0, following the method number 1, let us substitute the small positive number epsilon in place of 0. Now moving on to the next term, the next term will be 2 multiplied with 2 minus 1 multiplied with 1 over 2. So it will be 4 minus 1 over 2 which is equal to 1.5. And the third element will be equal to zero because we are not having any terms in first two rows here. Now moving on to the next row, which is the row of S squared. So the first term of fourth row will be epsilon multiplied with six minus two multiplied with 1.5 over epsilon. So it will be six epsilon minus three over epsilon. I hope you got this. Now moving on to the next element, it will be epsilon multiplied with one minus 2 multiplied with 0 over epsilon. So it will be epsilon over epsilon and we can say it will be equal to 1. And if we move on to the next term, it will be equal to 0 because we are not having any non-zero terms in these two rows. So in this way, we are done with this row. Let us now move on to the fifth row, which is the row of s power 1. So the first element of this row will be 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon multiplied with 1.5 minus epsilon multiplied with 1 over 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon. We can see it here. 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon multiplied with 1.5 minus epsilon multiplied with 1 which is epsilon over 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon. I hope you are getting this. We are following the standard method to form the routes array. Let us now move on to the second element which will be 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon multiplied with 0 minus epsilon multiplied with 0 over 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon. So these two terms multiplied with 0 will result to 0 and 0 divided with anything will result to 0. Now if we move on to the last row which is the row of s power 0 we will have 
this complete term multiplied with 1 minus this complete term multiplied with 0 over this complete term. If we solve this, we will have this same term in the numerator and the denominator. So both the terms will get cancelled and we will have 1. Moreover, we know that the last term of the Routes array is the constant term of characteristic polynomial, which is equal to 1. So in this way, we are done with the formation of Routes array. And we have completed the first two steps of method number 1. So let us now move on to the third step in which we need to examine the sign change by taking limit epsilon tending to 0. So let us now examine the sign changes. So if we observe the first column of routes array, we are having three elements which are in the terms of epsilon. The first element is epsilon itself. The second element is 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon. And the third element is this one which is in the terms of epsilon. Let us consider this term first in which we will have to examine the sign change. So we will have limit epsilon 10 to 0, 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon. Now if we split this term, we will have 6 epsilon over epsilon which will be equal to 6 minus 3 over epsilon. So we will have 6 minus limit epsilon 10 to 0, 3 over epsilon. Now if we put the limit epsilon tending to 0, the denominator will become 0 and we will have this term as infinity. So it will be 6 minus infinity, so the result will be minus infinity. So now this term is to be replaced with minus infinity. I hope you got this. Let us now move on to examine the sign of this term. So we have to consider limit epsilon tending to 0, 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon multiplied with 1.5 minus epsilon divided by 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon. We have considered this complete term by taking the limit epsilon tending to 0. Now if we multiply 1.5 with this term in the numerator, we will have limit epsilon tending to 0, 9 epsilon minus 4.5 minus epsilon squared. If we take the LCM, it will be epsilon squared. So it is minus epsilon squared over epsilon divided by 6 epsilon minus 3 over epsilon. Now this epsilon in the numerator and this epsilon will get cancelled. And if we put the limit epsilon tending to 0, these three terms will become 0. And we will have the result minus 4.5 divided by minus 3, which is equal to plus 1.5. I hope you got this. If we apply the limit epsilon tending to 0 to this term, we will have the result as plus 1.5. So we need to replace this complete term with plus 1.5. I hope you got this. So let us now count the number of sign changes in the first column of routes array. So if we start from this row and if we move to this row, then both the elements are positive. So there is no sign change here. If we move from this term to this term, we have epsilon and we have considered the epsilon as a small positive number. So epsilon is positive here and 2 is also positive. So there is no sign change here. Now if we move from this element to this element, epsilon is positive and we are having minus infinite. So there is one sign change here. Now moving on to the next row, we have plus 1.5. So there is one more sign change here. This is minus infinity. And this is plus 1.5, so there is a sign change. Now if we move on to the next row, we are having plus 1. So there is no sign change here, so the number of sign changes are 2. So we can say the system is unstable and the number of sign changes is equal to the number of poles in the right half of S plane. So the number of poles in the right half of S plane is equal to 2. So in this way, we have examined the stability of the system and we can say the system is unstable. And the number of poles in the right half of S plane is equal to 2. And we have done this by using the method number 1 in which we have to substitute a small positive number epsilon in place of 0. So I hope you got this method. We will now move on to method number 2. So let us now move on to method number 2 to overcome the first special case of RH criteria. And we will call this method as inverse polynomial method. And this is because in this method, we need to replace the terms of s in the characteristic polynomial with 1 over z. So we need to replace s with 1 over z in the original characteristic equation. Then after that, we need to take the LCM and rearrange the equation in decreasing powers of z. We will discuss that how we will do it. 
and in the next step we need to complete the routes array with this new equation in z and examine the stability with this array so if we replace s with 1 over z we will have a new equation which will be in the form of z so with this new equation we need to form the routes array and examine the stability so let us consider the same characteristic equation and apply this inverse polynomial method to examine the stability of that system so let us consider the same characteristic polynomial it is in the terms of s so we will call it as f of s it is equal to s power 5 plus 2s power 4 plus 3s cube plus 6s squared plus 2s plus 1 equal to 0 now according to this method in the first step we have to replace s with 1 over z so if we replace s with 1 over z we will have an equation in the form of z so we will call it as f of z which is equal to 1 over z power 5 if we replace s with 1 over z s power 5 will become 1 over z power 5 in the same way s power 4 will become 1 over z power 4 so we have 2s power 4 converted to 2 over z power 4 similarly we have 3 over z cube plus 6 over z squared plus 2 over z plus 1 the constant term will remain as it is because we are not having any term of s to replace with 1 over z here. Now we need to take the LCM and rearrange the equation in decreasing powers of z. So what will be the LCM in this case? Yes, it will be z power 5. So if we take the LCM, we will have f of z equal to 1 plus 2 multiplied with z. The LCM is z power 5 and this is a factor of z power 4. So the remaining factor will be z plus 3 multiplied with z squared. If we divide z power 5 with z cube, we will have z square as remainder. So we will have z square here plus 6z cube. If we divide z power 5 with z squared, we will have z cube as remainder. And that's why we have 6 multiplied with z cube here plus 2 multiplied with z power 4. If we divide z power 5 with z, the remainder is z power 4. And at the end, if we divide z power 5 with 1, we will have z power 5 as the remainder. So I hope you got this. Now if we transpose z power 5 to the right hand side and rearrange this equation in decreasing powers of z, we will have f of z equal to z power 5 plus 2z power 4 plus 6z cube plus 3 multiplied with z squared plus 2z plus 1 equal to 0. And this is our new characteristic equation in terms of z. Now we have to form the route array with this equation and examine the stability by applying the RH criteria. So let us now move on to form the routes array. So the first row will be z power 5 which is the maximum power of z and the second row will be the row of z power 4. Now following the same procedure we know that the first two rows can be filled with the coefficients of this characteristic polynomial. So the coefficients of this characteristic polynomial are 1, 2, 6, 3, 2, 1. So let us now fill this row in a horizontal manner. So if we follow the horizontal manner, we have to follow the alternate fashion. So if the first coefficient is 1, we need to skip the second coefficient. So the second term will be 6. Now we need to skip this term. So the third term in the first row will be 2. Now if we skip this term, we are not having any term. So in this way, the first row is complete. We will now move on to fill the second row. So already we have filled the first coefficient. So we will start with the second coefficient, which is 2. Now we have to skip this coefficient. So the second term in the second row will be 3. And if we skip this, the third term in the second row will be 1. And rest all the factors will be 0. So in this way, we have completed the first two rows of routes array. We can also fill this in the vertical manner and in that case we will not have to follow the alternate fashion. See the coefficients of this characteristic polynomial are 1, 2, 6, 3, 2, 1. Now if we fill this in the vertical manner, we don't have to follow the alternate fashion. We will fill it directly like 1, 2, 6, 3, 2, 1. So you should know both the methods to fill the first two rows. You can follow any of the methods. Okay, so let us now move on to the third row, which is the row of z cube. And the first term will be 2 multiplied with 6 minus 1 multiplied with 3 over 2. So it will be 12 minus 3 over 2, which is 4.5. 
Now moving on to the next element which is 2 multiplied with 2 minus 1 multiplied with 1 over 2. So it will be 4 minus 1 over 2 which is 1.5. Now the third element will be 0 because we are not having any non-zero terms here in these two rows. So moving on to the next row which is the row of z squared. So the first element will be 4.5 multiplied with 3 minus 2 multiplied with 1.5 over 4.5. So calculate this and find the first element in the fourth row. Yes, it will be 2.33. Now moving on to the next element, it will be 4.5 multiplied with 1 minus 2 multiplied with 0 over 4.5. If we solve this, we will have this same element which is 1. And the third element will be 0 because we are not having any non-zero terms here in these two rows. Now moving on to the row of z power 1, the first element will be 2.33 multiplied with 1.5 minus 4.5 multiplied with 1 over 2.33. If we solve this, we will have minus 0.429 as the answer. Now moving on to the next term, we will have 2.33 multiplied with 0 minus 4.5 multiplied with 0 over 2.33. It will be equal to 0, right? Yes. And similarly, this term will also be equal to 0. So moving on to the next row, which is the row of z power 0, which is the last row, and we know this element in the last row is the constant term of characteristic polynomial, which is equal to 1. We can also calculate it by multiplying minus 0 0.429 with 1, minus 2.33 multiplied with 0 over minus 0 0.429. If we solve this, we will also have this element as 1. So in this way, we have completed the route array by using this characteristic polynomial in terms of z and we will now examine the sign changes in the first column of route array. So if we start from first row and move to the second row, there is no sign change. If we move to the next row, there is no sign change. If we move to the next row, there is no sign change. Both these terms are positive. Now if we move from this row to this row, this term is positive and this term is negative. So we are having one sign change here, moving from this row to this row. Now again, if we move from this row to this row, this term is negative and this term is positive. So we have one more sign change here, moving from this row to this row. So overall, we are having two sign changes in the first column of route array. So the number of sign changes is equal to 2 and hence we can say that the system is unstable. Because according to Routh's stability criteria, there should not be any sign change in the first column of Routh's array. But there are two sign changes and hence the system is unstable. Moreover, the number of sign changes is equal to the number of poles of transfer function in the right half of S-plane. So in this case, we can say there are two poles which are present in the right half plane. So in this way, we have examined the stability of the system by using the RH criteria and for that sake, we have used the inverse polynomial method here. So in this lecture, we discussed the first special case of RH criteria in which the first element of any row becomes zero. And due to this, the next element becomes infinite and hence we are not able to fill the routes array and the route test fails. We are having two different methods to overcome this problem. The first method is substituting a small positive number epsilon and completing the route array in terms of epsilon and then examining the stability by taking limit epsilon tending to zero. And the second method is the inverse polynomial method. So tell me which method is better for you, method one or method two? Let me know in the comment section. So in the next lecture, we will discuss some more special cases of RH criteria as of now, we are done with this lecture. Thank you for watching this lecture. I'll end this one here. See you in the next lecture.